and I realized that I couldn't come up with anything if I was being harsh on myself. So I just, instead of, you know, saying, oh, you need to do X, Y, Z, otherwise X, Y, Z, instead of like giving myself this phony list of consequences that only lives in my brain, I just tell myself, look, you didn't get it today, but there's a yesterday, today was today, tomorrow's tomorrow. Yo, what's up? This is Toru, and in a way, so are you. For those of you who don't know me, I'm a music producer, artist, and entrepreneur. I make music for that space between the dance floor and the bedroom, which has been streamed millions of times and been licensed by brands big and small, including companies like Apple. I believe that regardless of what you produce, whether it be music, art, physical goods, or even spreadsheets, you have a process, whether you know it or not. To explore this further, I created the Producer Head Podcast. Producer Head is a place to have conversations with other producers about their experience and process to share what works and what doesn't, to help each of us learn and improve our own processes along the way. Today's guest is Rex Mason, a hip hop producer from Hartford, Connecticut, currently residing in Brooklyn, New York. Rex began producing at age 11, and for the past 13 years, he has released both solo and collaborative projects with a wide range of artists. Above all else, Rex prioritizes being a perpetual student of the craft and a stark advocate for creative independence. His influences include Jay Dilla, Mad Lib, Flying Lotus, DJ Premier, Easy Mo B, Ninth Wonder, and Pete Rock. RexMason.com is a one-stop shop for Rex's discography, merch, and marketplace for artists in search of beats. Welcome to part one of this two-part episode with Rex Mason. In this conversation, Rex shares his sketchbook mentality, the importance of maintaining sustainable working habits in order to produce our best work, and the power of a broad perspective in our day-in and day-out work. All right, without further ado, let's jump into part one of this two-part conversation with Rex Mason. Yo, what's up, everybody? This is Toru, and in a way, so are you. Welcome back to another episode of Producer Head. Today, from Brooklyn, New York, we have Rex Mason on the show. Welcome, man. Peace, peace. It's good to be here. Yeah, man, yeah, great to be here with you too, man. So without further ado, let's drop into the listening, man. What do you have for the uh, the first track for us? All right, first up, I have uh, a track called The Saga Begins by uh, Rakim. Off of his uh, off of his uh, first solo album called The Eighteenth Letter. Boom. All right. So with that, we have Rakim. The saga begins in three, two, one. Saga begins, my eyes is the photography lens. Properly push pens and show quality gym. The harvest be grim, but yo, maybe tomorrow we win. If we follow the trends and keep count of the dollars we spend. I want a mahogany bin, I want lottery in, I want property friends. Plus my hobby is skins. If I get sloppy and sin, then my prophecy ends. But the god to begin, watching my artist spin in a place where war be based on a true story. Territory was made for me to pursue glory. Blast alone, masses and zones have to be sown. Every capacity blown, I'm internationally known, yo. So all hail the honorable. Microphone phenomenal, persona is invulnerable. Trust me, son, I continue like a saga do. Bringing you the drama to allow you that the chronicle was just just gun, 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 gun. The saga begins. My never ending epic got the world spinning hectic. I quickly spread it to the whole city's infected. Suspense that I supply intensify. Then commences my daily events go by. You get involved in this. 
paragraph paragraphologist, narrating novelist, marketist, sound marvelous, I'm the star in this, which means the author's authentic, most definite, every episode's an epidemic, so when you research, check it, here go the evidence, they represent with lyrical negligence for presidents, my signs existed, without the fiction, every inscription is a special edition, so all hail the honorable, microphone phenomenal, persona is invulnerable, trust me son, I continue like a saga do, bringing you the drama to allow you that the chronicle was just the saga begins. It's all controlled. Rock and press it all. Yep, yo. The saga begins. We'll still play a rhyme after the next one. The saga begins. It's all controlled. Rock and press it all. The saga begins. Yo, the legacy lives, let them see what the pedigree is Mega thesis, blessing these kids with the features The depths are deepest, the deeper sea is Telepathy increases, melody can speak is Telekinesis, ideas appear as clearest Pictures and movie theaters, lyrics you hear is Devastating the way you hear it So stay tuned for sequels, part twos and more So soon you and your peoples can bug rush the store The name has changed, the game remain the same I one came to reign on his claim to fame No stopping this, I'm dropping this with hip hop in this and when the topic gets topicless, then I'm writing the apocalypse. So all hail the honorable. Microphone phenomenal. Persona is invulnerable. Trust me, son. I continue like a saga do. Bringing you the drama to allow you that the chronicle is just, just, gun, 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 gun. The saga begins. Just hold control. Rock and set it all. Yep, yep. The saga begins. Still say a rhyme after the next one. The saga begins. Just hold control. Rock and Okay, man, tell us about it. I'll tell you a little story. When I was about eight years old, I used to live in Richmond, Virginia, before I lived in Connecticut. And I remember me and my family, we were visiting my mom's side of the family, as well as my dad's side of the family. Everyone's from like St. Louis, Missouri, different sides of St. Louis, Missouri. And so we, we decided to make a road trip out of it. And on that road trip, my parents bought a few CDs or brought a few CDs uh, for the trip, one of which was the 18th letter by Rakim. And it was like my first time listening to it along with my dad, along with, you know, the rest of my family. And I was like intrigued from track one, but this one I believe is like track five or six. And it was really, I really had like, like a holy shit moment. Am I allowed to curse? Yeah, it's a safe space, man. Do you? Okay, okay, yeah. okay. Yeah, it, it was <laughs> yeah. a holy shit moment. Yeah. Uh, even as a as a kid, because it was like there's so much going on in this beat that doesn't happen in like the typical beats that I had heard on the radio. And I was just it, like this song, as well as another one on the same album called "It's Been a Long Time." Those were the two songs that really made me question how stuff is made dude what do you mean when you say that it had things that were different from what you were hearing already on the radio for instance like how the how the beat starts how it's like you know it seems like pete rock who produced the track is like just pressing all the pads you know mm -hmm. just kind of you know seeing what all the samples are and then you hear it all together it's almost like it's almost like striking up the band, you know what I mean? Like you mm. you allow the drummer to like, you know, tune his drums, the, you know, the person on on sax or, you know, whoever's first chair is, you know, playing an A for the rest of the band so like everyone can get in tune. It's it, it feels like that to me. Like how the sample reverses at, at certain points, how the drums kind of change up at certain points. And of course, like, you know, the, the scratching and, and just like kind of melding all those different, you know, pieces of, of audio together. I'd always been like kind of intrigued in music, even as a kid. But that was where I was like, 
how did somebody come up with this? That was mm -hmm. that was really like the first. So, is there anything else that you want to say about the track? And I will I will also say that track is solely responsible for getting me not only into production, but I also dabbled in in DJing as well as writing raps when like as as early as like nine years old. Oh wow! So it really mm -hmm. was like a spark in a really big way, like really yeah. literally. Wow! And what other? I mean, so wow! So you're your dad put you on to this, to this record. Mm. So what other kind of stuff did your family put you on to? I mean, uh, even though like that was, that was like, I would say one of few like hip hop albums that we owned in our, our house. Cause they were, especially my mom shouts to my mom. She was very conscious of, of what we consumed. Mm. You know, it was, if it wasn't on the radio, if it wasn't on TV or if they couldn't find a clean version of, of the album, then we didn't have it. And we just happened to get lucky that Rakim's album didn't really have a label, but, or, or like the parental advisory. Yeah. Label. But I would say we also like, there was a lot of, a lot of gospel, a lot of R and B, some like, you know, kind of, kind of smooth jazz, like, you know, some like Miles Davis's last album, doo -wop, Marion Meadows, Mary J. Blige, the bulk of her albums, Jodeci. Uh, it, it was still like a wide net, despite you know certain certain songs I, I couldn't listen to, or certain yeah. albums I couldn't listen to. I got you. I'm trying to keep things appropriate for the family at the young yeah. age. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. With that, let's jump into track two. What do you have next? Next, I have Golden Diva by Flying Lotus off of his second album, Los Angeles. All right, Flying Lotus, Golden Diva in three, two, one.
What would you like to say about Golden Diva by Flying Lotus? I would say, much like the 18th letter of Rakim, or by Rakim, this album, but particularly this song, like kind of, it was like a second holy shit moment for me. I I had known, you know, Flying Lotus from like the, the Adult Swim days, when massage situation was a bump when uh friday night funk was a was a, was a bump or first friday funk was a bump you know i listened to like some of his earlier work like 1983 july heat and it was like more like hip-hop centric it was like something that you know you could really get as a hip-hop artist but then when i heard this it was like jesus this is what hip-hop could be Mm. You know, this is like, I mean, hip hop has always been expansive. Beats have always been expansive and beats have always taken the best parts of other genres and melded it into something new, something fresh and something that is just amazing. But the way Flylo did it on on Golden Diva, but also, you know, Los Angeles as a whole, it was like, fuck, man, it was <laughs> It was it was just so refreshing and just so like, OK, this is where you could take it. This is like higher echelon production. No disrespect to to Pete Rock and and to Primo and everyone who came before Fly Low. But like this is this is like hip hop on like truly on drugs. <laughs> <You know? laughs> That's what I that's what I really felt uh <laughs> listening to this album. Like this is hip hop on some crazy fucking psychedelics. Yeah. Cause listening to it for the first time, especially like when it when it got to Golden Diva, it was like yeah, I felt like I was on drugs and I was completely I was completely sober. Mm -hmm. Uh, you know, listening to it for the first time. It was just insane and, and it was it made me it made me question again how music was created or this particular music was created and it made me want to like elevate my own my own style that's what's up. i mean i let man i got chills listening to talk because i can feel like how much it really did hit you and i know i yeah. mean he's come up on the show before with multiple people both with bureaucratic and with with nothing new we were talking i mean the impact of his music is really I can't say it enough to anybody that's listening to this conversation. If you're listening to this conversation, chances are you already know who this man is. But mm -hmm. if somehow you don't, please go listen to this man's. I mean, he really did, has made, and will continue to make crazy music. There's nobody. He really has influenced so many people. Mm -hmm. And it's it's really amazing, kind of. He really has broken down boundaries, I think, in terms of what people realized was possible within beats, if you want to call it that, you know? Yeah. And so, yeah, man, I mean, that's... And again, yeah, I couldn't agree more. That whole album in general is just pretty much unstoppable. Mm -hmm. And it, it still holds up. It's like, yeah, every single time I listen to it, I, I catch something different. And mm -hmm. that album is like 16 years old, I think, at this point. Um, yeah, so what did it come out in? Yeah, 2008. Yeah, it it's 16 years old, and I still catch shit that I didn't before. Right. I do just want to ask, in case anybody listening doesn't know, can you just give a little bit of context to Adult Swim and the word bump and what that means and how you heard it in the first place? Yeah, yeah. So Adult Swim is a, uh, I feel like I'm mansplaining here. <laughs> Adult Swim, Adult Swim is a, it, it's a, it was a block of, of, you know, teen and adult level cartoons on Cartoon Network. It used to come on, I, I want to say starting at like 9 p.m., during the weekdays and like 10 p.m. on on like weekends and bumps they they would have like their own kind of commercial bumps in addition to like regular commercials but a bump is basically it's like a little commercial that it's mostly just words it has a backing track and fly low sam i am dilla MF Doom, rest in peace, and rest in peace Dilla. They would basically create the soundtracks for these for these bumps for these little commercial breaks where, 
you know, they would they like Adult Swim would have like little quippy things, little like you know random like jokes or inside jokes for the the avid uh, the avid watchers. So yeah, I would say that's that's what a bump was, and yeah. and that's what Adult Swim is. Yeah, that's what's up, man. Thank you for mansplaining me. Cartoon <laughs> Swim. With that, do you want to get into uh, track three here? What do you got for us on this last one? This last one is by a rapper from Brownsville named Ka and a producer named Animos. They they went under the moniker Hermit and the Recluse, and the song is called Hades from their album called Orpheus vs. the Sirens. Right on. So here's Hades by Hermit and the Recluse in three, two, one. Who doesn't kill you only make you lava? Them years underweight, knew I'd make a great provider. The hardest lust was in God we trust. But faith and nada with guns known for blazing. Young only praising that sacred dollar. Villainous, fought on all cylinders. Vital times, don't stay around devil playground. They couldn't idle minds. Heard me poly even with dirty body. Had a fly spirit. Only one hear facts. Where it's at, how I get it. My gift genetic. If I pent it and said it, I meant it. Two friends, four attempts with tempers. Couldn't be tempered, supposed to lose. Cause all moves broke the rules, I bent it. Word to mama, drama had to run its course, couldn't prevent it. There's no strength on the fence, start taking sides. Losing our kings to beautiful things that led their demise. Due to my veil makeup, still wake up every day surprised. My eyes open, motion no longer hoping that my paper rise. Mind you, what I'm trying to do, bring pride to the gutter. The time's right to shine light. Just might widen your shutter, utter the scream. In 2015, said bottom my brother. On sight, I might look pristine, but still try to recover. Purity and obscurity, the glory I never bask. Craving, savoring good times, showing signs they never last. Coming to summit great is how I undertake every task. I'm relevant global, my elements noble. They just heavy gas. Fuck the fake deep. Safe sheep is the shepherd's pay. Bad for the streets, master my peace to step away. But he stayed in the kitchen. Whipping up a etouffee If you ain't ox, better change spots Just where the leopard stays A thou won't proud his mouths to feed Essentially, once empty bellies are full And houses greet between you and me Every knock ain't opportunity I hate the maybes So wake the ladies and take the babies In case it's Hades Wow, man, I've never heard that. So yeah, tell us about that. So, I mean, this was, I mean, I, I, I hate to say this uh, for like, you know, all the car fans out there, forgive me, but this was like my introduction to Ka and like Ka is a very, you know, as the, the moniker suggests, he's a very reclusive artist. You know, he, he's a fireman by day, hmm. uh, MC by night. And he just like releases all this crazy music by himself at random. And it's like, you know, completely independent. But the effect I would say this this had on me is like in comparison, I guess, you know, something like Golden Diva or even the Saga Begins, it feels very maximalist. 
mm. compared to this. And this is like, you know, the epitome, like I would say Kaz music is the epitome of like doing more with less, mm. um, you know, really setting a soundscape with just a loop, really, you know, driving home your ideology or using clever wordplay or you know, just telling a story direct, just like you on a mic, barely any ad libs, barely any doubles on vocals, or just just summing up a a lifetime's worth of experience in one bar. Like that's mm. that's what I get from from Ka and from from Animas's work. And it was another you know kind of holy shit moment mm-hmm. where it was like you know music doesn't have to be as intricate as you know the other examples that I that I chose it like it could be direct and and to the point that's what's up man honestly like of the stuff of yours that I've heard like this feels like the most like something that I feel like I've heard you make Mm. this like feeling you know like maybe the sonics aren't the same but I get a similar feeling how do you think about restraint and like being able to do more with less and when you make music hmm I, I guess in the moment I'm not necessarily thinking so much about you know, pulling back or like having to to overextend myself. It's it's literally just whatever kind of comes to mind. I've always said that I approach music as a sketchbook where it's like I can go in one day, open Ableton and kind of make the basic framework around something and then like kind of come back to it later and develop it from there, add in color, add in shading, add in all of these things. I I don't really feel called to like do more or, you know, or do less in one session. Like, mm. you know, I'll I'll just like add to it, add to it, add to it. And if I feel like it's it's completed, then then it's completed. So. Right on. Can you speak more on that Ableton as a sketchbook kind of mentality? Yeah. So I I know with like a lot of a lot of producers out here, a lot of them feel like they have to make the entire beat what what it's going to be in one session. I even fell into that into into that line of thinking because of like extracurricular things in my life, be it be at work or hanging out with friends, hanging out with fam, loved ones of all of all, you know, types. And I just felt like time was was finite, so I had to get the idea out right then and there. And then when when the pandemic happened, it was sort of like, okay, I don't have to get everything right in the moment. And I feel like that's also just a an easy way, an easy path to to burn out when you, you know, when you're like In a session, you're just adding, 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 subtracting, subtracting, and then adding again. You open it up to like second guess yourself. And that's why like I I took the whole like sketchbook approach just because just to avoid that burnout and and to realize like, look, it doesn't have to be all it's going to be right here in the moment. Like you need to marinate on on certain things, certain aspects of the beat, go out, live life, and then come back with a fresh set of ears. Yeah, it really sounds like taking just a really more long-term approach and letting something kind of grow a little bit over yeah. time more naturally. So I'm wondering what, how did you, how did you come to see that or discover that as a more like sustainable and like productive way to continue? I arrived at that when I was working on a project that I had and uh, that I released in 2020 called uh, Ascendant. I was I was really going crazy, especially since I didn't have work and everything like, you know, again, it was the the pandemic. So I was staying up till crazy hours, like three, four five in the morning, just like working on one particular thing mm. uh, or or a series of things. So mm-hmm. it would be like either one excuse me beat in a night it would be upwards of like three or four i just felt like i had to to keep creating keep creating especially since none of us knew what was going to happen or when during this like crazy pandemic with this crazy virus that no one knows anything about 
so I initially felt like, okay, my time is super finite now. So let me just like keep cranking things out. And then I was just like, you know what? Let me step away for a second. I wasn't doing the right things by, you know, my, for my mental and for my body, you know, by staying up that late and, you know, just, just like staring at a computer, like, you know, make this beat, make this beat or make these beats. Yeah. I just decided to, you know, kind of step back and just anytime I, I was called to do it, I would like, you know, go back in and add things and, and ultimately it became ascendant. So it's interesting. What I'm hearing too is, in this case, it was like the the example of the pandemic, but sort of this mm. sense of like urgency around time. So I'm kind of curious now about what stresses you out or where does pressure come from? These days, I, I don't allow pressure in, mm. I, or or at least like I try not to. As far as like you know, time and pressure in those days, it was just I really felt like you know my mortality was at at risk along with like you know the rest of the world a lot of that like came from fear Mm. i would say it just came from from like an overarching fear even even beforehand i would say it came from a fear of like okay uh you know the phrase always gets tossed around like hip-hop is a young man's game Mm. so i really thought that like you know because i was aging I turned 30 during the pandemic. I thought like my time here, like, you know, in my window of being a producer is shortening and shortening and shortening day by day. Every time I I opened Ableton after work or something, I always thought it had to be like the best shit ever, or, you know, I might as well just like give up now kind of thing. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it's all the like intrusive thoughts that you tell yourself. Whether it be to get your ass up and, and like do something or whether it's just to like, you know, really try to crank out like the best work is like those intrusive thoughts, like really kind of kind of fuck me up a little bit. In my experience and from the experience of many other people that have been on this, on this show, those thoughts don't seem to go away. Mm. So I guess I'm curious, what have you done or what have you experienced that's helped you deal with them in a way that's that helps you move forward? every single day you wake up it's it's a different you and like i have this this phrase and i think i told you about it once where it's like you know i just remind myself that there is a yesterday there's a today and there's going to be a tomorrow so you might not and basically basically meaning that like look you were on fire yesterday or maybe you weren't on fire yesterday but you're on fire today who knows what can happen tomorrow part of the the fun of making music is like just seeing just like stretching your imagination and really digging into that imagination bag and being like okay what can i come up with and i realized that i couldn't come up with anything if i was being harsh on myself so i just instead of you know saying oh you need to do xyz otherwise xyz instead of like giving myself this phony list of consequences that only lives in my brain i just tell myself look you didn't get it today but there's a yesterday today was today tomorrow's tomorrow before you soak up another episode of producer head please subscribe and drop a rating as well as a review wherever you are listening this helps producer head find its place and its people after all without you there is no producer head That's it for part one of this two-part conversation with Rex Mason. Make sure you come back for part two of this conversation where Rex shares how he identified the grooves of his self-talk to improve his practice and his art, how he combines structure and free-flowing time to capture inspiration, what producers can learn from the world of cooking, and the prioritization of making music for yourself first. Thank you so much for listening to this episode of Producer Head. If you enjoyed this episode, I invite you to drop a review and send this to a friend. It really helps Producer Head find its place and its people. Don't forget to head over to torubeat.substack.com and subscribe. This is where you'll be able to find an organized consolidation of each episode of Producer Head along with transcripts. You will also receive the bi-weekly podium, a top three curation of my favorite things found on and offline over the past week. It's a two minute read that provides you with a personal soundtrack, ideas, and practical inspiration that you can use immediately. So tap in and receive the bi-weekly podium, a top three personally curated by me for free. 
torubeat.substack.com and subscribe so that you don't miss any updates from me and or Producer Head. That's it for this episode of Producer Head. I appreciate you coming through and being a part of it. My hope is that it helps you unlock a bit more creativity and find progress in a way that matters to you. The theme music is one of my own songs. It is called Room to Breathe and available now on all streaming platforms. Again, for real, thank you so much for being here with me. And I look forward to catching you in the next episode of Producer Head. This has been Toru. And in a way, so are you. Peace.